<clears throat> I'm not sure who joined. Okay, I don't know if we have anyone on here as of yet, so I want to go ahead and start off with some prayer and then get right into the lesson. Um, hope everyone is doing well um, during this time. Um, it is a time of confusion and chaos, um, but nonetheless, we're just going to trust and believe God that he will show us the way, uh, that he will guide us and keep us. So. If you're with me online, uh, please join me in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we first want to just thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We also thank you, Lord, that you have kept us thus far. And we believe, Lord, that in all of this, Lord, we trust that you will have your way. That regardless of what is going on in the world, regardless of the chaos, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper that what we're currently dealing with, Lord, it won't, won't be compared to the future glory that we have in you. And that everything that we need, Father God, from finances, from healing, from comfort, from joy, from peace, whatever that may be, Lord, we understand that we can get it all through Jesus Christ because there's riches in heaven. And we know that with you, Father God, that all that we see and, and believe and, and trust, that it will all come to pass, that it will work out for our good. So, Lord, I ask that tonight, that while you're with us in this Bible study, Lord, that you be with me. Um, I decrease, Lord, that you increase. And I pray that what you have given me, Lord, that it will be helpful to those that are watching live or who will see this recorded version and someday in the future. Lord, we trust that you have prepared this day for us to take advantage of the time that we can have with you. And because that we take our time with you, Lord, we pray that you bless us. Open every door and guide us and keep us. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Hey, Ty is watching. All right, what's up, Ty? Miss Riley is watching. How you doing, Miss Riley? All right, so real quick, um, before we jump into the lesson, I kind of want to talk about me personally and what I've been dealing with. Um, you know, for a while, all I know is to be at the church, all right? Now, I'm a deacon, and, you know, last Wednesday, I talked about uh, that the true church is not technically uh, the building that we go to. Um, the true church is the body of believers, the body of those who confess Jesus Christ uh, as the son of the living God. Um, but the church do serve a purpose. The church is an assembly, uh, a building that represents a place of worship for those who believe and it's also a place where uh, those who come together can learn about Christ and go out and become disciples but it also lets people see a physical evidence of the body of Christ right outside of the, the true body is us as humans the church itself the building serves as this purpose um, but you know in the last couple of weeks with all that's been going on um, you know we have been Asked and mandated to shut the doors down. Um, asked to sit at our home, social social distance ourselves and everyone. And to be honest with you, I have had conversations, even with myself. Um, you know that that's been a struggle for most people. The struggle with you know not being able to go into the building because that is where our place of worship is. Um, but I'm here because God been dealing with me on my own personal growth. And I want to show you something in the word that we have read all the time. We, you have heard it. You know about it. There's nothing new. It's nothing profound. But it, I want to look at it in a way where we start applying it to our lives. All right. And for a while, you know, since Pastor Dixon has allowed me to to teach and prepare sermons and things of that nature, I have always talked about the kingdom of God. And to this day, I am going to continue to talk about the kingdom of God. And our lesson today is more so about kingdom attitudes, all right? Uh, kingdom attitudes is the characteristics of, of a kingdom citizen. The one who basically uh, has confessed Jesus Christ, who believes in his heart that Jesus Christ is the Lord, 
but also not only wants to confess salvation, but actually wants to live a life empowered. Uh, you know, I am in the belief that we just are not here on earth just to have salvation. We are here on earth to make an impact. We're here on earth uh, to do great things. And in order to do that, you have to first know who God is and have a relationship with him first. Um, and then two, you have to understand what your responsibility is in this whole uh, equation. You know, we, we just don't have a genius, you know, most people say, I rub on, I rub uh, Christ's belly, so to speak, and say, all right, God, give me, give me this and do that and do this. There's a work that's required from, for us. And I want to begin building that work with the eight kingdom attitudes, all right? Um, and if you have your Bible with me, if you're going to be following me, go to Matthew 5. Go to Matthew 5. We're going to start with verses 3 through 12, okay? And I'll read them. Um, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which persecute for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So, in those, in those scriptures, we get our eight kingdom attitudes, okay? And remember, I'm all about kingdom living. I'm all about us being able to receive on earth what God has blessed us to receive. Um, I don't want to see us living defeated lives. And truthfully, in this time, you know, we don't have Sunday. We don't have church to go to Sunday uh, for Sunday worship. We don't have church to go to Bible study. We don't have church for Sunday school. We don't have church for this musical. We, we cannot go to the church right now for a lot of things that we would normally do. And sometimes we get caught up in those traditions and those habits of being, I have done my due diligence as a Christian. But there's more to life than what we can do at the church. I know this week and the week before, people were preparing for Easter, um, coming Easter, getting your speeches together. All these things that we, we normally typically would do if the church was open. Unfortunately, the church is not. So does that mean because the church is not open that we sit here and wait for the church to be reopened for us to start living our Christian life? Do we wait um, for the church opens for us to go out and do the things that we would normally do if the church is open? No, there is still a requirement for us to live a life that God has called us to. And and this moment is to me, you know, me and my wife talk, I, I mourn for the individuals who have lost a loved one or who are affected by COVID-19, whether that's financially or physically in their health. I do more for those and I pray for them. Um, but hindsight, but looking at it, if God is a is God, if God is allowing you to get through this and God is allowing you to see the other side of all of this, then you have to know that there was more to life that you should be preparing for that is coming. All right. So we cannot. We cannot if we cannot go to God and say, man, because of COVID-19, I couldn't go to church. So, you know, I didn't pay my tithes or, you know, I, I, I just was chilling at home. I didn't study. I didn't read. I didn't even try to grow myself. I didn't do any of those things. Like, that's not an excuse. And a lot of that is because traditionally and religiously, we do things off a of habit instead of doing things for a relationship to better ourselves. So we're going to go with these eight attitudes. This, this won't be a long lesson. Um, but it's something that I'm, I'm actually going through myself, uh, preparing myself for spiritual development because I want to live the best life and I want to have what God has for me. And I know that going to church doesn't make me any better of a person and going to church doesn't make everything perfect in my life because now I don't have the church. I can't follow on that. I have to follow on something. And the only thing that we truly can follow on right now is God's word. And whether you have a pastor that can preach to you, whether you have a deacon or a mother or anybody that can teach you, it is your responsibility now to try to take advantage of the opportunity to grow and learn God for yourself. So that when the church do open, and I pray it opens soon, 
that all these individuals who took the time to grow would then go out to these churches, spirit filled, ready to on fire, ready to do what we should have been doing years ago. And that's discipling. That's getting people to know who Christ is. Forget membership of the church. Forget building more churches. Let's get to the point where there are more people disciple who want to know Christ better. And then when they know Christ better, they go tell someone else. So the first eight, the first uh, attitude of the eight is humility. And that's Matthew 5, 3. All right. Matthew 5, 3 says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> so the word blessed in all of these scriptures means happy. All right. Happy, happy is the person who is poor in spirit, happy is the humble individual, one who does not think highly of himself, all right? And, and that's key, and that's important to have that attitude because at the end of the day, you are no better than anybody else. I'm no better than anybody who's not doing this. I'm no better than the person um, who just became a Christian. I'm no, it, positions, titles, all that doesn't matter. What matters is you don't think of yourself more highly than others. That's an attitude we need to have, all right? And because you have that attitude, here's the promise. The promise, the promise is theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So in all these eight, uh, all these scriptures, we, what we're going to see is there's an applied action from us and there's a promise filled from Jesus Christ. When we do the action, God fulfills the promise, okay? So the promise for having a humble spirit and not thinking highly of yourself is that you get to be, uh, you, the kingdom of heaven is yours. Now, this is deep, but follow me. The Bible has never been about religion, all right? The Bible is not about religion. It's not about being the best Baptist. It's not being the best Christian, the uh, eighth. It's not about all that. Any religion you could think of is not about that. It's about God's kingdom, his territory, all right? And kingdom of heaven is God's, is, is our country for those who are kingdom citizens, all right? Um, and so when when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is yours, he's saying everything that's in God, in heaven, our country, our home, the authorities, the powers, the resources, the things that we need, then we have access to that. So being humble, having an attitude of being humble, having an attitude of not thinking highly of yourself, this is what God says. When you do that, when there's an opportunity for you to think, to be humble, when there's, a, when there's an opportunity for you to think humble or be humble, then what happens is I give you the a promise of the kingdom of heaven is yours. So that means you have access to all that's in there. So that's going back to what I first started or I first stated, our life should be about kingdom living. If you want to stop living defeated lives, if you want to stop living paycheck to paycheck, you want to stop living um, in hurt and, and, and health, bad health, and, and, and frustration and stress and depression, all those things, there's a way that we have to live. And that is having an attitude. Let's begin with the attitudes. Let's just start with that. Let's have an attitude to first say, you know what? I want to have a kingdom attitude. And one of those kingdom attitudes is um, being humble. So happy is the humble for everything they need uh, from heaven is theirs. All right. That's the first one. The second attitude is penitence. And that's basically the mourn. That's Matthew 5, 4. Um, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. All right, so doing some more study. I, When you hear that word mourn, you think of someone who actually died. And that's okay for us to weep. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's not for that. But there's more to having the characteristic and attitude of mourning. It is to really repent or really have a... Uh, uh, a sadness to evil, to have a sadness to when you do something wrong, to really be in remorse. That's a better word, to be remorseful. Um, there, are, there are situations where we see wrong, all right? We see wrong, whether it's in a church, whether it's in a home, whether we do wrong, I've, I've done wrong, right? And instead of like, man, I shouldn't have did that, or, or feeling like, man, you know what? That wasn't right. Sometimes we just go about our natural day like, man, oh, well, I just messed up. On to next. There's a kingdom attitude of being remorseful. Um, and it's important for us to be remorseful um, because that, that does allow us to acknowledge that in our, in our imperfections, we still have a guy who looks at us or looks at Jesus Christ who was interceding on our behalf and say, he messed up. She messed up. But they heart, they understand that they did wrong. 
Don't hold it against them. Look what I did. Look at my hands. Look at the side. You know, that's Jesus for us. And when and and being remorseful is more of showing respect to like, you know what? I did mess up. That ain't right. And let's fix this. Let me change the way I think and operate. And it says, for they should be comforted. So I've messed up. All right. I messed up recently. All right. Matter of fact, a couple of days ago I messed up. Um and I didn't even, it, it didn't, it didn't hit my head until like I started preparing for this lesson. I was like, man, I really did just messed up. But then I started reading God's word to kind of fix it. I started feeling better about myself. All right. And that's huge in the, in the life that we live on earth. It's huge because sometimes even our worst or deep secrets that we want no one to know about, but you know, God know about it. It's good. That if nobody else can forgive me, at least I know God has forgiven me. And it feels good to know that God will comfort me even in my mess. And that's big time because a lot of the things that we deal with in life is stress. We're, we're, we're depressed. We're frustrated. We, 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 we just live a life of just anger because we're trying to protect ourselves from people judging us. And God like, forget them. I'm going to comfort you in this mess. I'm going to show you love. And that's huge. That's that's a lifestyle you want to live, knowing that at the end of the day, if I fail in everyone else's eyes, and I know I failed, and I know that I messed up so bad, to know that God still loves me and he will comfort me in my mess, that that is a blessing. And you want that. I want that. It felt good to know that, yeah, I messed up, but you know what? God got me. And that's that's big, all right? Um, the next one, uh, third one, meekness. All right. Meekness, uh, Matthew five, five, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. So remember there's an action for us and there is a promise that God will fulfill that, uh, blessed are the meek. All right. So how can I describe meek? It is, it's power under control. Uh, but it's also, it's also when you have the right and a justification, do something, you decide, God handle that for me. All right. But you don't, but that doesn't happen in the moment that you're tested or that you're tried. That that happens beforehand. That's, that's something that you've been wor working on because <laughs> times before myself, if you put me in a situation where it, it made me mad or I had to react, it wasn't always God coming out first. All right. It wasn't always, um, let me go, let me take a time out and pray and, and see what God say. It, it wasn't that. The moment in, in, in my BC days, before Christ days, the moment that you put me in a situation to where I had to react and respond in a way that wasn't good. I didn't sit and say, you know what, Lord, think, let me think about this, how this is going to react. I just reacted. So meekness is an attitude of knowing that regardless of what happens, or what people do or how people, what people put you through or whatever the case may be, that instead of responding, you have that, you have that much self-control that you are not going to allow them to put you in a different type of mindset. All right. And, and that, that takes that takes a journey for some people, for some, for, for some people like Deacon Thames, Deacon Thames, the most peaceful, happy, jolly guy. you right. Um, I have not yet seen him respond in a way you'd be like, Oh, they, they, they're going to, they're going to real Deacon Thames. Cause he doesn't respond like that. His, <laughs> regardless of how heated the situation may be, Thames is just, okay. All right. And he'll give you the word. Meekness is that meekness is, I have an attitude that at the end of the day, it's not my job to show you power. It's not my job to show you who I am. It's my job to be the blessing, to be the light so that you can see God work and let God handle it. And and, and truthfully, be, and if God do handle it, like I have mercy or I'm praying for you that, you know, God will show you mercy because whew, if, if I would have done it, it probably would have been better than God doing it, you know? So meekness is... It's having, it's having that clarity to say, at the end of the day, I live a life where I'm not trying to be your, be combative or your enemy or whatever the case may be. I just want God to shine. And if that means that God have to handle this, I'm letting him handle it. But I also pray that through this, that you will see God in a different light. You will see God 
in me to where we won't have that 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 problem anymore. So that's meekness. Um, like I said, that's an attitude and a characteristic that you gotta you gotta groom within yourself. It doesn't just come at the moment that something happens. That's something that you actually preparing. Um, and I pray that we all get to that point. Because at the end of the day, as disciples, we want even the worst enemy of ours to see Christ and to know Christ for who he is. And and, and being that you you want to be merciful so that that can happen. Um, where we at? Uh, oh, that was meekness. I'm sorry. Spiritual hunger. Um, spiritual hunger. That is... Matthew 5, 6, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. Happy is the person who wants spiritual growth. Simple as that. Happy is the person who wants spiritual growth. Um, and in essence, you want to be in a position where you're always developing. And like I started off saying before, for the, for the past couple of weeks, many churches have been shut down. Many churches have been closed um, because of all that's going with COVID nineteen, and so that doesn't that should not stop your spiritual growth, right? Um, that should not stop you from growing individually. And the, the thing about being hungry and thirsty for Christ is, um, or righteousness, you want to be in the right position, a spiritual position. That means you want to be doing the things that you should be doing because that's righteousness, all right? You want to do all that it takes for you to get in that position. And if you would rather sit back and complain, if you want to sit back and wait for the doors to open whenever they decide to open, then what's what's going to happen is that you're going to miss an opportunity that you could have grown at this point. And you don't want you don't want that to happen. It's important that you that you you grow spiritually. And this is the this is the promise which I love. He says then you will be filled. Filled in this position means when you seek after me and grow and develop as a person, then I will make you complete. All right. So Jesus is saying, you seek after me and study me and how to become a better person. What you need, I'll make sure you have complete, you're completed up. So if that's peace, you be completed fully with peace. If that's Finances, I will take care of that. If it's joy, I take care of that. If it's healing, I take care of that. I won't partially get you anything. I won't just help you here. I will make sure that you are completely full. That's a blessing. So the attitude to study, the attitude to grow, and, and, and I'm, and I'm going to say this, this lesson is helping me personally um, in my life because I know there's more. And all that I have dealt with in the last in the, in the last couple of months, the last couple of years, just trying to become a leader, trying to do all the things that I think is right. In spite of all that, I still have to grow and know that when I'm growing and I'm growing in God, that the outcome is he's going to completely fill me. He's going to make sure that I am not lacking in any area of my life. And that's a blessing. So the action is, what do I do to study, to grow? And that might be, just study a few chapters or a few verses and trying to get the understanding of what it means. That means reading the book, the Bible for the whole year. That means watching someone else do a Bible study. That means calling someone on the phone, a conference call, and say, hey, let's do a Bible study together. That means Zoom. Zoom is big right now. All right, Zoom, you can meet and see everybody. That, get your family together. Whatever the case may be, how are you need to grow? God's, God's going to honor you for growing by completely filling you so there is no lack in your life. And that's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like there are many people struggling with with, uh, with jobs, uh, with finances today. Um, just all that's going on. COVID-19 really showed us this. If you have never depended on God in your life, this is this is the worst time to start, but it's the best time at the same time. The worst time to start because now you got to figure out, you got to learn this, right? You got to start figuring out how to do this. And you got to pray that God can show you the way and get through it. And, it. and this is a time, it's a rough patch. You know, I would rather learn something when it was easier than learning when it's hard, right? Um, but then it's also the best time because you can't trust man. You can't depend on man. You can't even count on what's going to happen. To be honest with you, I don't even trust the little virus they're going to give us. If I mean, the virus, the uh, vaccine. I don't know what they're going to do with the vaccine. Uh, we history has shown us that man does not care about us enough to do what is right, to do what is godly. And 
we're going to trust that? This is the best time to figure out who you going to, what side you going to be on. I'm either going to be on Lord's side or I'm going to be on Trump's side and figure out what Trump going to do. And God bless you if you choose Trump. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work out for you. I really don't know. But I don't want to know. I, I'm, I'm going to choose God in all this. Uh, but at the end of the day, what's true and what's, what's good about God is when you thirst after righteousness, that's being in the right position with him, he will then return, make sure that you're completely full, all right? Uh, mercifulness, Matthew 5, 7. Uh, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And that's kind of going along with meekness. I kind of spoke to, spoke a lot about that. But happy are those who, instead of rightfully judging someone or rightfully condemning someone or rightfully doing what is right, they say, you know what? I messed up. You messed up. It's all good. Um, let's fix this. How how do we fix this? How do we get you or get a group of people from going in this wrong, in this direction? Um, because at the end of the day, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. We all fall short. I I admit I fall short, and I want God to give me mercy uh, when I ask for it. So if you can give it, He can give it. If you cannot, He still can give it. That don't mean He'll give it to you. So think about that. How can you be of a person who wants to not condemn someone, but help them change the way they, they view life or the way they do things? All right. Um, inward purity. Matthew 5, 8. It says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We're all right for purity. All right. Holiness. All right. Um, happy is the clean spirit. Happy is the one who protects himself from anything that is evil. That's an attitude that you need to have. You and I need to have. We need to walk in life knowing that we no longer want to consume ourselves or anything that will take away from our purity or our holiness. Right? Because we are a temple for the Holy Spirit. You want the Holy Spirit to be in an atmosphere within you that is conducive to what it's used to, which is in heaven. And so you don't want to feed your body any of those things. Um, in a physical standpoint, uh, I mean, you know, I'm working on my health. There's a lot of things that I don't need to put in my body because it's not health, healthy, nor is it cleaning for my body. It doesn't even help my body to be clean. So we want to, to make sure that we live a life of holiness and reject anything that's not of that. That's the attitude we need to have, all right? And... And by doing that, you shall see God. Now, see God, we're going to see God when it's all said and done, right? But I want to see God now, right? And how you see God is you knowing that he responded in your life. He responded in such a way that you know that it was only God. Good example. COVID-19 has caused chaos in this whole entire world, right? And the only way that COVID-19 ends is not through social distancing. Social distancing is not the cure to COVID-19. It stops the spread, right? That means that COVID-19 is still out there and still around. The only way that COVID-19 is going to leave is not based on social distancing, but based on the fact that God removes it. God allows our brilliant scientists to come up with any solution that will help us but that's not because man is just so smart. Because if man was smart, we wouldn't be in the situation as he is. We wouldn't be sitting here waiting on them to figure out what they're going to do. God has to open their eyes. So we know that in the times that we live in and all the technology and all the advancements we have, how is it that we are in this position? And there's a lot of things that we could talk about, you know, political reasons, conspiracies and all that stuff in the nature. But one thing I do know that man has no control over this. So for this to end, for us to go back to life in a better way, it has to be that God shows himself light. And when he does that, you know it's God. And he does it in your own personal life. Whenever you are in the midst of doing something, in the midst of uh, wanting God to respond, you see God in the work, all right? Whether that's someone can say, whether that's someone um, that, you, that you probably gave up on and seeing them differently. Um, to see God open doors in your life that you know is only God. That's seeing God here on earth. But we will see him physically 
when it's all said and over. So keep yourself holy because being holy, you get to see God work. You get to see God work in ways that people in the flesh cannot. All right. Um, peacemaking. Oh, my goodness. So verse nine, uh, Matthew five, nine. Blessed are the peace peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. All right. So <laughs> personally, and a couple months ago, I was part of an organization or part of a team that was putting together uh, this 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 sports league or sports um, sports club for the the future of Kankakee. All right, and it was a lot of drama and chaos and all that. Right, and at one point I, I had to look at myself like, am am I really doing this for? the future of Kankakee kids or am I doing this for the fact that every time somebody or, or entity tries to do something good or great, it's always backlash. It's always, you got to do it this way. I was going to do it that way. And for a while and all of that, I was not showing peace in that. All right. Because I had my foot in the ground. I had my mindset. I had my heart. I knew my heart was in the right place, but the outcome of all this wasn't peace. And I had a couple people out that mentored me. I talked to them about it. And one thing, one thing they said that, and there are certain situations where you're being and that you're doing right and you think you're doing what's right, but it's not you that's causing the problem. It's just, that's how it is because of whatever's going on. But biblically, that's not right. Biblically, peacemaking is to avoid all type of evil or all type of, of, uh, chaos to not do things that would trigger things to be bad. All right. Um, and, and that's tough because we live in a world where people are sensitive. We live in a world where everybody has rights. The dogs got rights. Humans got right. Every type of human got right. Every type of human that's not a human that was once a human, whatever the case may be is everybody got right. So there's so much sensitivity. Um, but you have to be on the end of if it's God's will, and if you're doing it for God, then you will avoid anything that will taint what you're trying to do for God. And that's tough. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to learn it. I'm still trying to learn that because you really have to think of other people. You really have to think of the times that you're in. You have to really consider everyone's feelings. And that is tough. But there's a blessing in that because when you're doing things of God and you're doing it with the right spirit and you do it the right way and you and you go about doing things where other people don't see you, but they see the God in you, then they also get to see God work. And that's the most important thing. Whatever you do, make sure that God is being seen and not yourself. Because when you when it's yourself being seen, even though communication is two ways, you still have to be responsible for saying, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I don't cause problems, all right? Um, and, and, and the reason that being is we don't have a church building to go to right now, right? So when things of, when you're doing things of peace and, and you're making peace and you're trying to avoid chaos and confusion and, and evil intentions, all this and the other, those people get to see you and say, oh, that's a child of God. And when people see you as that, it's not about you, really. It's really about the God you serve because they can then say, there's an example of God on earth. And that's that's the that's the blessing. That's the key. And that's what we all should strive for. All right. Um, and last but not least, endure suffering. Um, Matthew 10, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when uh, men shall revile you and persecute persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and exceedingly be glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So in essence to how can I say this? To endure suffering, to have an attitude to endure suffering is basically saying no matter what comes against you, 
to influence you to change. You won't let nothing separate you from the love of God. You won't let nothing separate you from your relationship with God. You won't let anything, anything keep you from trusting and believing in God. Now, I, many of you might be saying amen to that right now. Many of you might be, I can do this. I, all right, <laughs> listen, <laughs> anything. And we don't live in a society where they will kill you for your belief. You know, you might have, you know, couple religious uh, acts where people have bombs strapped on them and they'll come and travel and do that. Um, you know, you might have people that will shoot you based on militant type of religious activities. But to be honest, we don't live in the days or live in the area to where because you confess Christ that you will get hanged. Because you confess Christ, you will get shot. Because you confess Christ that your life is in danger. We don't live in that time. Now, we have had moments, right? Um, but to be persecuted means you're, you're at the point where they want you to break your ties with what you believe and trust in. And nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing to ever separate you from the love that you have for Christ, uh, for your relationship with God. And that's an attitude that we need to have because the time that we're living in, if you're not careful, if you're not um, diligent in what you're looking at and what's going on, you will begin to lose trust. And because our doors are not open, and, I, and I'm not saying this out of respect, please hear my heart. Most, most times, there are more people in the church that are there because of tradition and habits. I was one of them. I would go to church because I was a deacon. I'll go to church because I was a drummer. I would go to church because I had to drive a church van. I'll go to church because I got to teach Sunday school. I go to church because I got to count the money at the end of the, when they do the, the collection. I go to church because I got to make sure the monitor is on. I, I go to church because of habits, of my position. And when you go to church for that, you miss out on your relationship with God. And when you miss on your relationship with God, when life hits you hard, then you are in a situation where you're like, God, where you at? And he's like, where I've always been. The question is, where are you at? And when you're at that moment in life, we have to make a decision. Do I trust God or do I figure it out? <clears throat> and when you try to figure it out, you end up messing up. You end up making the best decision you thought was the best decision for you, but you don't realize it's a consequence coming because that's not the right decision. You're, you're, you're not able to see past your circumstances. So persecution is not so much to... They hate you. Persecution is you can persecute yourself by allowing yourself to even think and believe that there is a better way. And so when the church is not open right now because of COVID-19, many people are faced with a decision of what do I do? What do I believe? Or what's going, what's going to happen? I can't go to, I can't play the keyboard at church. I can't play the drums at church. What I'm going to do? And what you be, what you should have been doing is trusting and believing and knowing who God is and that nothing not COVID-19, not the doors being closed, not some other religion, not some terrorist attack, not some lack, not, not, not enough money, not marital problems, not, you know, kids having problems, not you, your, your health bad. None of those things should ever keep you from God. And you have to fight to make sure that nothing separates you. That's enduring persecution. That's an attitude we have to have. So when you have a moment that comes to your life where it's challenging and it's tough and all you and you don't have a church to go to right now, you don't have a, a pew to sit in that you normally sit in, what are you going to do? Simple. Grab God's word. Find an answer. Find a scripture to your, to your problem. Read that scripture and find out through studying it how, it will, can, how you can apply it to your life. Remember, every kingdom attitude I share with you, from Matthew 3 all the way down to 12, there was an action that was required of us, right? We did an action, then God fulfilled a promise. And that's the life we got to begin. We got to build that foundation now. There, we don't know when the church is going to open. Um, we don't know when you're going to be able to do an Easter speech again. It might be next year, all right? We don't even know if they're going to find a vaccine time soon. But what you have to do at this moment is to not lose hope and faith in him. This is not a moment to doubt. This is the moment to hold on. And while you don't have a place to go to, this is the time to get your Bible. 
in everything that you're dealing with in life. Find a scripture for it, all right? Read that scripture, study that scripture, and pray that scripture, and trust God to fulfill the promise. I gave you eight kingdom attitudes. Matthew 5, uh, chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. Those begin with the, the kind of attitudes we have to have, the, the kind of attitudes that every kingdom citizen should have. And then it goes on from that, from those verses all the way to the end of chapter seven um, to principles that we need to, that we need to abide by. These are, these are solid laws that we must, we must live by. Um, if you can start with those eight verses, Matthew five, chapter five, verses three through uh, 12, study those right now. And not only study, but take what each one is saying and find a scripture dedicated to that. And then start applying it to your life. Whenever you are in a situation where you need to be humble, be humble. Whenever there's a situation you need to be merciful, be merciful. Whenever there's a situation we need to be peaceful, be peaceful. Whenever there's a, uh, a situation you need to grow spiritually, do that. When, whenever there's a moment for you to exercise one of these attitudes, do that. Because God is obligated based on his word to fulfill the promise. All right. Whether that's giving you access to the kingdom of heaven, whether that's giving you allowing you to see him work in your life right now, whether that's allowing him to comfort you, whether that's allowing him to completely fill you. When you do those things, when you do those things, God's obligated to do those. And listen, listen, I didn't go to school for this. All right. Um, I have I have been taught at Mount Calvary. We have some great Bible studies. I, I know a, a, a couple of people that can help me. Um, when I have questions, but truthfully, trial and error, experience, these are things that I'm learning and I am still learning, but start with that. At this, like, at this moment in life where there's no building to go to, you have to build your foundation on the confession that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. That's number one. Number two, the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, what Jesus preached. Uh, I'm trying not to go so fast, but I got excited. But the Sermon on the Mount, what Jesus preached, began to read that. Don't read all of it at once, but just start reading. The, uh, like I said, the eight attitudes, those are kingdom attitudes, all right? Start with those and then start applying them in your life, all right? Start applying them in your life. And as you apply them, what's God do what he said he's going to do? Because like I said, we can't trust man and we don't have a church to go to right now. And if you go to church right now, there's a possibility the can't keep police might show up and say, hey, shut the door, close them, all right? And then if you go to church, it's a possibility that you might end up being infected. But right now, because we got the blood of Jesus, we should live a life of greatness, not fear. But we should also start doing the things that we have to do ourselves because we don't have a church to go to. All right. Those are the eight kingdom attitudes. Start with those. Apply them in your life and watch there be a difference. Watch there be a difference in your life. And I'm telling you this because I'm, I'm doing it now. I'm doing it now. Um, and I pray that this message is a blessing. I pray that, pray that this message was a blessing, all right? I'm done. I, I think I'm done. Part of me want to keep going, but no. Nah. Um, let's pray. Uh, Father God, it has been a wonderful time um, sharing your word with your people. It's definitely been a wonderful time for myself to know that I am growing and learning. Um, but Lord, I ask you right now that every person that tries you at your word, every person that is listening to this, watching this, and trusts you who tries this scripture at your word, Lord. I pray that you will honor everything that they do according to the word of the promises that you have said. And we know in your Bible that it is said that every promise is yes and amen. And so, Lord, we're asking that for everyone that tries and, and lives these kingdom attitudes, that they will be able to receive and be the recipient of your blessings. In this time now, even in all the chaos and all the the deaths and all the the uh, the the, un, the frustrations, the un, the unclarity of what's going to happen next, Lord, you are still God. You are still the Most High God, and according to your word, you are the Most High God. You sit above, and all promotion comes from you, Lord. Nothing comes from man, so we don't have to even worry about what Trump and all his scientists and his cabinet and the Senate and the House. We don't have to worry about what they're going to do. We know that you have the answer. We know that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And we know, Lord, that at the end of the day, what we are currently suffering is not worth being compared to our future in you, Lord. So supply us with all of your things in heaven. Lord, we ask that what you do in us, Father God, let us be the light in this world, the salt in this world, so that they know that there is evidence 
But there is physical evidence of a true and living God. And we serve his son, who is the king of all kings, Lord of all lords. And we know that, Lord, your kingdom of God is at hand, regardless of what is going on. We thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name. We all do pray and believe. Amen. Um, whew. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I cannot breathe right now because I'm talking too fast. Um, um, a couple things before I do uh, get off. I need you to pray for a lot of our people worldwide. All right. A lot of our people worldwide, there are a lot of people who are affected by this financially and physically. If you know them, put their name out there for, for yourself. Pray to God. Bless them. Um, heal them. We also ask that you, at God, comfort many people who have lost loved ones in this. Um, this is real. Um, that doesn't take away who God is, um, right? God is God of gods. He, I mean, he's the only God. Um, but earth is what he has us on and we have to be bright. We have to be ready and we have to be ready to, to, to take ownership of and manage what he has given us. And in that we will lose soldiers and in that we will all have to die one day. Um, and it's unfortunate that many people have to go in a way that a virus took their lives, but nonetheless, pray and remember those people pray for their families. Um, you don't understand. There are a lot of people who cannot go visit their families during funerals right now. Um, a lot of things that they would technically do, they're not able to do during funerals right now. So this is tough. All right. This is what, like I said, there, these eight attitudes are not just so that everything, you, you know, everything is just going to be all right. We are going to have to face some trials. All right. But our prayer and our faith is that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above above. We can ask the thing. Our prayers that we can walk through this, holding hands together and get through this. Whether we see them on the other side of COVID-19 or when it's all said and done and God come get us all. Let us all be in the mindset to love one another, to love God and to be the best light we can. And start off with these eight, ad, uh, eight kingdom attitudes and go from there. All right. Many blessings. Peace. I love you all. Um, and we'll see you Sunday. Lord's will. Be blessed.